In this video, we will demonstrate how to create and use submodels in Strap. When working with submodels, we divide the main model to submodels. When we have a repetition of a part in our model, we can use one submodel for every repetitive part. For every submodel, we can define instances. We can define one instance in a case that the submodel is not repetitive or a number of instances that equal the number of repetitions of the submodel in our model. We will use a simple example to explain the basic principles when using submodels. In the example on the screen, the beams were defined as submodels. The bottom three beams share the same submodel with three instances. The fourth and the fifth beams also share the same submodel with two instances and the upper sixth beam is another submodel with one instance. The columns in this example are a part of the main model. So the terms we will use when working with submodels are main model, submodel, and instances. Instances are every appearance of a submodel in our main model. Another term we will use is connection points. Connection points are the nodes that connect the submodel to the main model. We can display and edit our main model or submodels with the drop down submodel menu. The drop down menu can be dragged to any location on the screen. Let's display the main model. When we display data in the main model, we don't see any data. For the submodels. We don't see beam numbers or node numbers of the submodels. When we are displaying the main model, we can see the submodels, the beams in our case, but we don't see any data that is related to the submodels. In order to edit a submodel, we will need to choose the submodel we want to edit from the submodel drop-down menu. After selecting the submodel, we can edit it and display data that is related to it. For example, for submodel beam add plus 3 plus 6 plus 9, we can see that the section assigned to this beam is IPE 300. Let's change the section to IPE 330, redraw to see the new section type, and go back to the main model. In the main model display, when we ask to see node coordinates, for example, we can see that the data displayed is related only to the main model. To get data for the submodel, we will have to select the submodel and display the data. There is an option to display data for submodels in the main model display. Go to display, then submodel instances. Checking the box used current display options for all submodels means that for any data we request in the main model, Strap will display data for all submodels. After checking the box, we can see beam and node numbers for the submodels. In the Remove Display Submodels window, we can also choose which submodel instance to display while displaying the main model. Clicking Remove All will remove the display of all submodel instances. We can see only the main model. We can select each instance individually or display all will select all instances. Another option is display current submodel view. After choosing this option, we can see for the first instance the same view as viewed in the submodel display.
Now we'll display the connection points and explain their meaning. For the first submodel, a pinned connection was defined. Pinned connection means that the beam is linked to the columns for displacements, but not linked for rotation. For the second submodel, pinned connection points were also defined. For the third submodel, we can see a fixed connection, which means that in addition to displacements, the beams and the columns are linked for rotation. We can display connection points data. Go to Output, Display Submodel Connection. This table will display for each instance the connection point node number in the submodel and to which node it is connected in the main model. We can also see the connection type. In our example, we can see connection for displacements x1, x2, and x3. Since we are working on a plane frame model, x4 rotation around x1 axis and x5 rotation around x2 axis are restrained. But the x6, which is rotation around the x3 axis, doesn't appear, which means there is no restraint for rotation around the x3 global axis. Furthermore, in the last column of the table, we can see the distance between the connection points of the submodel and the main model. When we see the value 0, it means that the connection point in the main model and the connection point in the submodel share the same coordinates in the main model, which means that they are unified. This is the advisable condition. Let's define another connection point in our submodel. We can see a 1.5 meter distance between the connection points. Because we defined a new connection point in our submodel, Strap will search for the closest node in the main model and will connect the new connection point to it. We can see that node number 3 in our submodel, which is the new connection point, is connected to node number 10 in the main model. If we check our model in Edit Check Element Definition, the program will display all nodes at which it identifies a distance larger than 4 cm between the submodel connection point node and the main model node. We can see a warning that there is a distance of 1.5 meters between node number 3 in our submodel and node number 10 in the main model. Let's delete the last connection point we defined to fix our model. Now let's move to load definition in the loads module. Let's define a new load case and name it Design. Now we are in the main model and when we want to apply loads on elements in the submodels, the horizontal beams in our case, in the selection menu we'll have to check Select Beams in Submodels. If this option is not checked, elements in the submodels won't be selected. We can see that we applied the load to all the beams in the main model and in the submodels. When we are in the loads module, the drop down submodel menu will display submodel instances, as opposed to in the geometry module where we saw just the submodels 
in the drop down menu. Let's choose the first instance from the drop down menu and we'll define a new load case and name it live. While we define the load, we will have the option apply load to all submodel instances or selected instances of a submodel. Let's choose to apply the load on all submodel instances. We can see in the main model that the program applied the load on all three instances of the first submodel for which we define the load. Next, we will solve the model and analyze the result. Let's see the moment result diagram for the first load case. We can see for the three instances of the first submodel that the moment at the beam ends is zero because we defined a pin connection for the first submodel. For the second submodel, we also see a moment diagram of a continuous beam with a pinned support. For the third submodel, we can see a negative moment in the beam ends because of the fixed connection points we defined. In the next example, we'll demonstrate how to define a submodel and how to use it to create a submodel instances. The model we see on the screen includes a slab with beams at its edges, supported by columns and walls. We will create a submodel which includes the slab and the beams. Clicking submodels in the main menu will open up the submodel window. Let's define a new submodel. We can see that we have multiple options to create a submodel. We can select a part of the model, we can duplicate an existing submodel, or we can convert an instance to a submodel. We can also create a submodel from another model. This option will import another model into our project as a submodel. We have two more options. We can use model wizard library to create a submodel, or user defined will give us a blank sheet to create a submodel. In our example, we will use select a part of the model. We'll call the submodel slab. We will select by level and choose 3.0, which is the level of our slab and beams. Once we created a submodel, the drop down menu becomes available and we can see our submodel that the program created. As a default, all connection points are fixed. The program creates these points automatically where it identifies the connections between the slab and beams in the submodel and the columns or walls from the main model. Let's display walls and columns to see clearly the connection points. As explained earlier on, when we move to the main model, we can see the submodel, but we can't see node numbers or any data that we request for the main model. Now let's go back to the submodel and redefine the connection points. Choosing connections in the main menu will give us connection points submenu. We would like to restrain the connection points for displacement, which means x1, x2, and x3, and rotation around the x3 axis, which is basically x6. We'll select all nodes with restraints. and we can see our new connection points. Now we would like to define a few more floors to our structure. 
In the main model, with the copy command, we will duplicate all elements in the main model, columns and walls. While selecting in the main model, only nodes in the main model are selected, although we see the submodel nodes. Let's choose a reference point and a new location for the reference point by an existing node, and we will create three copies. Now we will add instances of our submodel. The first instance was created automatically once we created our submodel. Let's go to submodels and open our submodel window. Highlight our submodel and in instance we'll click add. We want to add three copies and we will add as a submodel. The option add as individual elements nodes will add our submodel as a part of the main model. The program asks us to choose a reference node in the submodel and a corresponding node in the main model for the first and second instances. We can see that we created four instances of the same submodel. Now we will display and examine the connection between the slab in the submodels and the walls in the main model. We will choose this wall for the example and the supported slab. In walls submenu we have the option link. For this command the program searches for nodes of slab elements in the walls section perimeter and divides the walls vertically according to the nodes of the slab and according to the parameter dmin. In our case we will use the default parameters and continue. When we redraw we can see new nodes in the main model alongside the wall. When we display the sub model we can see new connection points for these nodes. Now let's say we want to change something in the geometry of the main model. For example, we need to change the section of this shaft. We can see the shaft in the submodel. We'll change the wall section in the main model. and we can see that there aren't any nodes in the wall section perimeter which means that the wall and the slab are not connected. We can see it in the submodel as well. To address this issue in the submodel display we will go to connections automatic. The program will redefine the slab elements mesh to match the change we made. Let's define pinned fixed around height connection points and checking change elements to coincide with main model nodes. That's how we will recreate the slab element mesh to match the nodes in the main model. After clicking OK we can see that the program recreated the mesh and defined new connection points. Another important point we would like to focus on is that all connection points in all submodel instances must be identical. Let's say that only on the top floor we have a column supported by a beam. When defining a node in the main model, choosing more, move to a submodel node, will allow us to choose nodes from the submodels. Let's choose our top level. 
select a node in the submodel and we'll automatically be prompt to the main model display and we can see the red cross indicating the node we just chose. Add another node 3 meters above it. Checking add beams will add a beam between the nodes. We can see the column we defined. This column is not connected to the submodel because we haven't defined a connection point in the submodel. Adding a connection point in the slab submodel will create a connection point for all instances of the submodel. We will have to create a separate submodel for the top floor. We will go to Submodels, New Submodel, convert an instance to a submodel, name it Slab at plus 12, choose instant number 4. And now we can either manually define a connection point or the program can do it automatically. We can see the new connection point. Dashed line represent a column from plus 12 upwards, unlike a solid line which represent a column in the current level. Now we created two submodels. The first is for the first three slabs, and the second is for the top floor at plus 12. Another issue we would like to point out is related to the connection point restraints. In our example, we defined a pinned connection point with restraint around the height axis, x6. Let's change the connection point to pinned only in both submodels. In the main model, we will change one restraint to pinned. By the way, now the column that we defined earlier on is unstable because its connection point is pinned. We'll have to change it to a fixed connection point. Now let's define loads. As earlier explained, check Select Elements in Submodel to load all elements in the submodels. Now let's solve the model. The program gives us a warning message, Singularity at Node 57, X6, which means around the X3 global axis. Let's explain why we got this warning message. First, let's locate node number 57. It's at the top of this column. What happens is we define pin connection points at nodes 10, 29, 43, and 57, which means that all elements that are connected to these nodes are unrestrained for rotation in all directions. In addition, the support at the column bottom is also pinned. In theory, this column can rotate around the X3 global axis in a free manner. 
That's why we get the singularity warning message. This is the reason why we chose, when defining connection points earlier on, pinned and fixed around height. As in the loads module, in the result module, the drop down submodel menu will also display all instances, not just submodels. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.